Welcome to the Hebrew Prophets. I've been looking forward to this class for quite some time because I truly believe that we can learn much about putting some muscle into our ministry today from the lives and ministry of the Old Testament prophets. Let's begin by looking at what the New Testament has to say about prophecy, and we can begin by 2 Peter 1, 20-21. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. A couple of things that we find here. Number one, as we use this usually, we're talking about written Scripture, but it's actually talking about the process of prophecy itself. And it says that prophecy begins in God's heart. Hosea and Amos, Ezekiel, uh, didn't have an idea that started in their own head, and it wasn't so much because of a problem that bothered them personally. It was God tapping them on the shoulder and saying, I've got something that I need to share. There's something on my heart that needs to be in the ears of my people. But it also mentions that the prophecy is delivered by men. It's prophecy that's shaped by the personality of the burden bearer. And so as we will go through the various prophets, we'll see how their backgrounds and how their training and how their personalities shape the kind of message that we receive today in the part of the Bible called the Hebrew prophets. Some Hebrew words for, for prophets. Uh, the main one, the one that's used by far the most often, is Nabi, which means spokesperson. And we have this today. Every uh, famous person has a spokes spokesperson. The president has someone that's their spokesperson. And it's a person that's hired or appointed uh, to bear the message of an important individual. And in this case, of course, the important individual is God himself. Two other words that are used not nearly as often are Hosea and Ruah, uh, Roa, which means seerer, one who sees. And I think this is really instructive for us because although the main word talks about a prophet who hears God's voice and then speaks that message to other people, it also reminds us that prophets are those who see God's heart and to find ways of showing God's heart. And so we'll find uh, many times the, the prophetic message is not even spoken, but it's, it's a message that's act out, it's a parable, it's an object lesson, as the picture here in the image of the prophet Ezekiel having to eat the scroll. Abraham Heschel one of the, the great mentors who will guide us through the prophets reminds us that prophets amplified God's feelings. Amplified God's feelings. Humans tend to minimize God's reaction to their sins, but to the prophet, our failings are disastrous. Or in the words of Abraham Heschel, which you will read in page four if you haven't already, Quote, to us, a single act of injustice, cheating in business, it's almost cliche now to atone. This slight prophecy is not just foretelling, it's a disaster. But also forth telling. To us, injustice and actually is injurious read to the through of the people. The pages of to the, the Old Testament was a death blow books. to exist in the next eight weeks. To us, we will see the prophets to them much more of a time declaring God's view of human the affairs. World in very little time predicting human history. In a religious environment where people had systematically built a view of the world that nullified and muted God's voice, the Lord called upon prophets to announce decisively the divine perspective. And while we will investigate the historical setting of each prophet, uh, we will not leave the prophets and the prophecies in ancient history. And so we want to know 
what Daniel meant in Daniel's time. But more than that, we want to know what those prophets mean to our time. Since Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the human activities that burdened and wounded God's heart in 650 B.C. will still break his heart today. Accordingly, we will constantly keep our eyes open for glimpses into what God thinks about the church and the broader society today. The prophets that we will read were not only commissioned to speak a message to non-believers, but actually more than that, they were speaking um, to believers. They spoke about the Moabites and the Babylonians, but they spoke to Israel and Judah. And so we will attempt to hear God's message for ourselves and for our communities of faith. Often someone will tell me that they consider themselves a prophet. And what I sense they really mean is that they are angry at the church and don't feel obligated to control that anger. The Hebrew prophets did convey God's anger, but they also conveyed God's love, God's hope, and God's compassion for his people. If the prophets made any impact on their listeners, it was because they blended love with anger. They mixed compassion with warning. Brueggemann and Heschel suggest that each prophet expressed a wide range of emotions, and we will read, starting next week in Gary Smith, that each of the prophets had a carefully calibrated communication plan that, that they chose and that they intent, used intentionally to change the society which they faced. And so this is why your main pro, pro, uh, project for our class will be the development, the shaping of a prophetic message that wields maximum impact because it contain, contains all of the emotional breadth and intellectual depth of the original prophets. The Old Testament prophets are that section of the Old Testament that really catches the feelings of God, but also the vision that God has for the time when he will be able to have a people that fully understands his heart and fully obeys his word. As we feel his yearning in these pages, we will discover also the overwhelming joy that God is anticipating at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit is poured out on all people and God finally has that people who understand his heart and obey his word.